the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo has returned to Stanton, and once again we are heading for the Tobin Expo Hall in New Babbage. This is my second IAE since I began playing, and it was a doubly exciting day for me as Drake are the official sponsors of this year's event. IAE is one of two major ship events throughout the year in Star Citizen, the other being Invictus Launch Week. These are in-game convention style events featuring display halls from all of the major ship and vehicle manufacturers in the game. Each manufacturer gets two days to display their ships in the expo halls, with a new manufacturer being added daily. And so for the next two weeks you can visit the halls and both see ships on display and rent them all for free. This also coincides with a free fly opportunity for players without a starter pack, allowing anyone to give Star Citizen a go for free and try all the ships. I am a big fan of the Drake lineup of ships and today is Drake Day so I was eager to head to the halls and check out the displays and in particular the newest of the Drake lineup, the Cutter. But on this occasion, the server gods were not on our side, and in Europe at least, some kind of technical problem dropped us out of the game for about two hours. When I made it back in, I'd be at Area 18 on Arc Corp, but as I had a cutter in my hangar, C West and me could take a look around anyway. There was a white paint. I, I always go with the white paint. But then I saw this one, and I actually really like the green and the orange. It's... yeah, it's really interesting. These new Drake ships, like they've got so much detail, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's so much. Like you look at the on the front there, you got the Drake logo kind of um, stamped in. And... Yeah, it looks. I I like Drake. I think the aesthetic kind of comes off as kind of ugly, but these are looking really good too. Like I, I still love the aesthetic. It's amazing. It's just. I think. I think what you're going for, what you mean is like that it's intentionally ugly, right? Yes. Yes. It's intentionally very much um, super industrial, no frills. You could fit a mule in there, I think, I saw a picture of, or you could possibly do it. Do you think you could fit um, an STV in here? Uh, I think it's a little too too uh, thin. I, I think an STV might be... If you could fit it in, it would be a tight fit, and you probably wouldn't be able to easily get in and out of the seat. You make a good point. I would be interested but... to try, though, you know? Oh, definitely. What are these? Oh, those are, like, all the component racks are, are apparently in there. Besides, right. like, two that are in the front, which is interesting. Basically, some of them are empty. I was just curious what they yeah, are. Yeah, that's cool. I love these racks. Like, something very unique <laughs> again. Like, we've not seen this on, like, the ships, right? It's, yeah. And close that door. Oh, I just made it to the expo. Oh, it looks so cool. There's little windows as well, by the way. Like, it's right by the ramp. There's little windows. Oh. Okay, that, that's odd. Like, it's something that's not needed, yeah. necessarily, but so handy to have, because it's like, hey, I can look outside before even opening the door. Just cocking it and... Like, in the next room, I think there's actually doors you can open and shut, if I remember correctly. The living space aboard the cutter is surprisingly tidy and very cozy. We'd visit the bathroom first. Yeah, that, that has a lock. Oddly. <laughs> I, I love the way that comes out. <laughs> it worked, I think it'll take out wait. some fucking knees. <laughs> like, just watch how quick it ejects. It's like a booby trap. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sounds horrifying. So yeah, you're right. This this does this does have a lock on it as well. But lights on or off in here right now? It's hard to say. I will say this about the new Drake ships. Oh, oh hello, got a lot brighter. Okay, so maybe I've been walking around with the lights off, but like I have noticed that they are maybe needs a little more light in there, you know? Yeah, I noticed that in that video. The Corsair had a particularly dark communal space when we checked it out, but when turning on the lights here in the cutter, things got brighter than I expected. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Wow, that's much brighter. I do really like that that like orange amber kind of color. I do so as well. Nice. It's like a warm colour, isn't it, you know? Yeah, and, and it makes perfect sense why they would have warm colours like that. Okay, so we've got external storage. 650? 650,000 micro SU. Oh. Yeah, that's a, That's still pretty good, because what, a... I don't have any backpacks on me here, do I? Is a thousand micro no, SU no. one SU? I believe so no wait 
again, lights are off. Let's go ahead and turn those lights on. Oh, look at that. They kind of like come on with like a bit of a flicker. That was cool. Yeah, like, hey, it takes a second. I would. Ooh. Is that a heavy weapon rack? Uh, I don't know, actually. Maybe. If that is, that's awesome, because having a, a weapon rack that is meant for heavy weapons would be so handy, because I don't think you, I don't think there's any other ship or vehicle that you could put a, like, a railgun mounted into. You have to just throw it in the Check that internal out. storage, or... Look, it actually oh, lights it up red. A... Yeah, lights up oh. red. That's cool, isn't it? I love, I love visual indicators like that. But now we'd be jumping in the pilot seat to see what the dashboard has to offer. This is interesting. This is really interesting, which is when I saw the images of this, I was worried that the visibility would be limited because of the way the you know, the windows look it, like they look oddly placed on the outside, right? But yeah, actually, yeah. like you know, head tracking, it's, it's you've got, got more visibility than a, a freelancer. It does, yeah. Like, oh look actually, at that! You've got a little window up there as well. So, <laughs> but one switch in particular caught my attention: canopy armor. Oh, is that what they were talking about? Oh, look at that! Yeah, you get oh, little. Oh, that, that is what they were talking about then. That's interesting. That's wow. I'm bringing some paints along because I want to put a paint on my corsair and I want to test the other two paints. But we'll do that when we get back to New Babbage because I'm going to fly this back to New Babbage. for a starter too like i think that that's definitely gonna like beat out the uh the adventure i think maybe not like weaponry wise but as far as like anything else jesus it's got a massive quantum fuel tank so i was jumping back to microtech to carry out a few small tests i cannot speak to the efficacy of these starter ships to a new player but for a lot of players, myself included, we use these starter ships as quick runaround vessels. I tend to fall back on the Avenger Titan and, in fact, fly it more than any other ship. It can be claimed instantly, so no waiting around, and I am usually only doing things like bunker missions, so a small, inexpensive ship you can replace immediately if destroyed or left behind is really useful. The Titan O cannot carry an STV and has no external storage. For shearing items easily, can the cutter outmatch the Titan for this kind of gameplay? I don't know what the claim time is on the um, cutter. One minute, one minute even. Uh, one minute yeah. after expedite. No, expedite. Oh, time. great. Okay, it's perfect. Like the claim time is the single biggest reason why I use the Avenger Titan so much. Yep, same reason I use Pisces. It's like, it's right there if I need it, <laughs> whenever I need it. So first up was loading an STV into the back. How easy or difficult was it? On this attempt I'd be heading in forwards and the space is okay, but there would be some problems. Oh yeah, that's plenty. There's plenty of room. Probably behind. It was, yeah, it's tight behind, but not too bad. But, I mean, like, if we're looking at it now, there's plenty of room for me to move. I had to climb onto the STV to access the door controls, but I did get it shut. Like a glove. This is so cozy, goddammit. Jeez, look at that. <laughs> Front end reminds me actually. Really front end reminds me of like a train. 
you know, it looks yeah, kind of, for sure. it's got that kind of feel to it. Next, I ventured out in the cutter for some minimal combat. I still had the stock size one gimbal repeaters on here. You can, of course, replace them with fixed size two weapons. You have my calm, that's amazing. I need some help mopping up these bastards. I'd be taking on a low risk beacon. I would like to have seen them put some more guns on it. I am not a very good pilot, and especially when I'm using mouse and keyboard instead of sticks. But the cutter felt very comfortable to use in this kind of basic PvE fight. In my opinion, this isn't a ship you're picking up for its combat capabilities though. It's about the onboard utility and how readily accessible it is. It's, you know, they're balancing it out because you can already get the Titan, which has more firepower. Yeah. But it isn't as big, you know, in some I was honestly expecting it to be at least the same price as the Titan, nice. if not more. It's a really, really great deal. Instant claim, good, good uh, mobility, and the ability to carry Steve. Uh, Steve. Um, that alone, yeah. you know, makes Quick it worth the asking price. Too, or retrieval, rescue. Plenty of room, kind of. So I was heading back to New Babbage with the intention of leaving the cutter in the spaceport and heading back to the expo halls. But I noticed that the thrust on the cutter's engines was very strong in VTOL mode, but as I was about to find out, they are much less powerful when trying to break while in VTOL mode. Doesn't want to break. You're <laughs> coming in real hot there, boss. <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 engine pods, right, are very powerful uh, in whatever axis they're oriented to. Like the downward thrust kind of surprised me when I was on Cal Calliope. Very very weak in the other axis. But the STV is still in the back. The rear ramp is the only entry or exit point on the cutter, so it was unavoidable to encounter the STV again before leaving the ship. And here's where driving it in the way I did causes a problem. There is a way to do this. Paul can inform me of a better way to park the STV in future. If you back, back it in, it'll put the gap on the other side and you can get to the panel. That is actually not a bad idea. That I just turned the lights off, which doesn't help me in this situation. Oh, maybe I can jump in here. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Test failed successfully. <laughs> if I take the STV out in the hangar, it will get a warning, won't it? It'll get a impound warning. Never tried it. Well, okay, let's let's try it now. Science. But I wanted to try backing the STV into the cutter, so I give it another go here in the hangar. Vehicle impounded reckless operation. What? By backing in, the driver's side is on the same side as the cutter's door controls, so leaving space there is mutually beneficial. That looks better, yeah. That's that actually. Little hop needed over the back wheel, but if I close the ramp now. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Best ship in the game. <laughs> it's easily the best starter ship. Oh, yeah. Like, absolutely. Yeah, no question. There, cut it. Yeah, it kind of ended that argument, didn't it? As you can tell, we are all very excited about the cutter here, more so than the Corsair even. 
because like I said the small starter ship that is easy to claim and gets you from A to B is the kind of ship we are flying 90% of the time. Having a new and improved option in this area, even if it isn't really very combat capable, is a nice development. And I expect we'll be seeing a lot more of the cutter going forward. As always I want to thank all of you at home for watching and of course all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. Thank you all for your very generous support of the channel. Without you generous folk none of the videos on this channel would be possible and I'm very grateful to all of you. We'll be back with more coverage from IAE later this week and again thank you all for watching.